Hi, this is Gary. Today on MacMos Now, let's take a look at how to set up mail on your Mac. There are many ways to get mail on your Mac. For instance, you can get it through a web interface with something like Gmail or Yahoo Mail. But if you have a regular email account, say through an ISP with your own domain name or through your cable modem or DSL provider or even through work, you may want to use the mail application to go ahead and download your email to your computer. Let's take a look on how to set this up. The things you're going to need are the name of your mail server, your email address of course, something called a POP account ID. POP stands for Post Office Protocol and a POP account password. Now you're probably also going to need an SMTP which is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol and the password for that as well. POP is for getting email, SMTP is for sending email. Now in mail you go to File, Add Account is the easiest way to add this account. So all you need to do there is enter your name as you'd like other people to see it when they get your email and also enter the email address as you'd like other people to see it. Now the next thing you want to do is add the password, the password that you were given by your ISP. On the next screen you set the type of account. Now we're only going to talk about POP accounts in this tutorial but there are also IMAP Exchange accounts you can set up. You want to add the incoming mail server just as your ISP gave it to you. And you want to add your username. Now usernames are tricky. In some cases they're what appears before the at symbol in your email address. In other cases they're your email address. Sometimes they substitute another character for the at symbol like in this case a plus sign. And then your password's already filled in or you could add it now. Now it confirmed that the POP account does work before it moves on to the next step. So we're going to do the outgoing mail server. So in the outgoing email server we're going to type in the same thing there we go um, and in this case it's the same but it may be different for you. User authentication, username and password is also the same for me in this case although it may be different for you. Now we continue and it's also going to confirm that that works and it's going to give you the screen that tells you that everything works. And then you click the create button. Now immediately it's going to go out and try to get email. Now what I've done is I've sent an email to this account already from my Yahoo account just to test it and sure enough I was able to get this test email very easily. I can then reply to this email and make sure that the SMTP server is working as well. Now you get all this information from your ISP or from your cable modem or DSL provider or from work. Make sure you have all this before you try to set up your mail account. You'll need every bit of information. Now in some cases you have a choice of SMTP servers. You can use either the one on your own server like I was using MacMost.com or you can go ahead and use the one by your cable modem, DSL provider or other type of ISP like say one set up at work. Sometimes this is required. Sometimes they only let you send email if you're using their server. This is an effort to cut down spam so that you can't have a computer and then be going through their system and sending spam out through another computer. Now this is where a lot of people run into trouble. They're able to get POP email very easily but they can't send email. If you can send email there's a lot of suspects. One is you may have the wrong SMTP server or wrong address or your ISP may be blocking you. For instance if I'm trying to use MacMost.com's SMTP server but yet I'm behind a cable modem firewall it may just completely block me from using that and I have to actually go and configure my computer to use the SMPT server of my cable modem provider. So you want to look at your documentation that your cable modem provider gave you and they probably have an SMTP server listed there. Of course this is all taken care of if you're using both POP and SMTP and the email address provided by your cable modem or DSL provider as it should all work then. If you have any trouble at that point the next thing to suspect is your firewall is that perhaps not necessarily on your Mac but on your router there might be a firewall rule set up so that you can't send email. If this is the case you're going to have to go and consult the documentation from your router or from your ISP. It's worthwhile for us now to go and look at the more advanced settings. If you go to Mail Preferences and you click on the Accounts tab you can then select the account you just created. Now this is where you would go to correct any information that may have changed or you may have gotten wrong. You can go here and change all those bits of information we talked about including the SMTP server. You can actually edit from the list and go ahead and edit that particular SMTP server you're using. 
So this is where you can go to uh, check your information or alter it. Also, in the Advanced tab, there's some things you should check out. In addition to enabling or disabling the account, you can have it included when you're autom it's automatically checking for email, or you can deselect that to have it manually check only when you want. And there's also the Remove Copy from Server After Retrieving a Message option. Now, it's automatically set to after one week, but you can also set it to right away. In other words, as soon as you get your email from the server, it removes it from the server. Otherwise, if it's set to one week, it hangs out at the server for a week. This could cause trouble if you have a very small quota from your ISP of how much email you can have on the server and you get a lot of email. You could easily fill up your inbox. A lot of people have this problem. You can also hit the Remove Now button if you wanted to clear things out right now. Now, one reason you may want to keep things around for a week is if you have two computers both getting email from the same POP account. In this case, what will happen is you get email from one account, but it leaves it on the server for a week. Then later on, say in the evening, you go home, you check another computer, it will get all those emails from the server that your first computer left on there. So you can essentially get the same email at both machines. Now, each copy of mail will remember which emails it got, so you won't ever get any duplicates, but you will get each copy at each machine. So it can come in handy. Also, this is where you can go ahead and change ports, ports for getting email, and back in the account information under SMTP, you can actually change ports for sending email too. So if your ISP has told you you need to use special ports to do this, this is where you can go ahead and change it. So if you're still having trouble with getting email or sending it, you want to go and recheck all of your settings. And you also want to go ahead and then compare them to the settings that you're given by your ISP to make sure everything's perfect. Then you want to check your router to make sure no firewall is getting in the way and you want to consult documentation there. And then you probably want to call your ISP if it's still not working at that point. The problem with getting help for your email from a place like the Apple.com discussion forums or from here at MacMost is that there are millions of possible ways that your email could be set up. With your ISP, with your router, there's so many different combinations. It really is hard for some general help to help somebody in a specific problem. So you want to go ahead and talk to somebody in customer service if you at all can. So I hope this tutorial has been able to help you set up mail on your Mac. The mail application is very powerful and it comes with your Mac and it could be a great tool for managing all of your email. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.